Good afternoon, y'all. This is just going to be a quick sound bite. So I wanted you all to know that I have, in a way, some DNA proof that the person that I thought was my mother all these years is not my mother. Not only do I not look anything like that person, and not only did I not, you know, energetically feel, you know, close to her as um, a daughter would to their actual birth mother, that, you know, natural biological draw to an actual mother um not only that so the spiritual the biological aspect i also have some dna evidence that she's not my mother because of the fact that um i was supposedly diagnosed with you know i was diagnosed with sickle cell um i noticed that i noticed this years ago but it i didn't put two and two together back then but I, I always questioned it and it was always in the back of my mind when a person when okay so if there's a, a child born with sickle cell it means both parents have to have the trait now as i said before my pendulum reading said i i don't really have sickle cell but my guides and ancestors said that it is a gene there's some kind of gene compl complication it's neither here nor there my medical records say i have it etc but we know we all know that shit can be doctored either way i've suffered a lot of fucking pain and complications over the years so obviously there's something genetic i don't know whether it came from as i said before the super soldier aspect of my genes being manipulated while i was in my birth mother's womb and that i ended up with sickle cell as a result of a gene experiment or gene therapy or some kind of mistake some some kind of snafu that they made with me or whether there's an actual genetic reason meaning actual passing it down you know what i mean through the line so it could have been that they just fucked up and i ended up with it because if you make mistakes when you're editing genes you can cause a you can ha cause anything from chronic illness chronic genetic illness to horrible deformities so i think they i don't know whether they made a mistake I think I'm leaning towards that, that they made some kind of mistake and I ended up with sickle cell um, versus it being passed down. And the reason why I'm saying that is because my birth mother allegedly, and I'm saying allegedly because I don't have any documentation, I don't have any physical proof of this. I'm just going off of what the spirit realm has told me. Um, my birth mother and what also me and Kenyatta have discussed, my birth mother was likely in the military too and my birth father was in the military. If either one of them had the trait, then the military would have knew. So I always questioned my father's aspect like, you was in the military and you had sickle cell trait? How the fuck was you in the Air Force with sickle cell trait? Even if the testing wasn't all of that back then, as they like to say, which it was, how the fuck were you in the military with sickle cell trait? Because they're hesitant to let people in with the, with the trait with the trait these days so how the fuck were you in there with the trait and then your um sickle hemoglobin with you having the trait would have had to been very low so how did you have a daughter with sickle cell if your hemoglobin was that low so tying it back to my birth mother who like i said allegedly passed away when i was four which i don't have any documentation or proof of other than the spiritual communication and i do have um a little bit more evidence regarding the fact that the person that i call my the surrogate the one that uh has taken care of me all these years um not, not all these years but took care of me as a child until i got out on my own in my early 20s she claimed that she had sickle cell trait but i believe she was lying to me all those years because none of her children have sickle cell trait my point is if she had the gene she had the sickle cell trait one of her three children would have also gotten that trait none of them have it which means she does not have the gene which means i cannot possibly be her daughter because i have a disease that takes two parents with the gene to produce or either it can occur through like i said some kind of strange gene therapy gene modification or genetic engineering now i'm leaning towards them making a mistake with genetic engineering something interesting my aunt said my dad's sister she's they're still living now 
my dad's sister told me back in she said this and i believe it was because she was on medication and you know she's been hopped up on anxiety medications uh narcotics and stuff a mixture uh over the years and i noticed that sometimes when we used to talk on the phone back then um when she was feeling euphoric off of whatever cocktail she was on she would say things that she would otherwise not say meaning it would lower her inhibitions just like alcohol and drugs usually do it made her more free-flowing at the fucking mouth she said to me one fucking day y'all i lie to you not and if I go back and dig through that old phone, I believe I have that call recorded. She said, Bree, I don't even think you really have sickle cell. I think they just told you that just to limit you or hinder you and make you feel like you couldn't do what, you know, do certain things. Because, you know, for you to have gone to Finland, you know, you can do anything. You're, you're, you're capable of doing anything. You've gone farther than any of us have gone which really I haven't because my grandfather, her father went to Russia, but she was, just, you know, and she's been to Japan and stuff, but she was just saying like, you've gone farther than any of us have gone. And she actually said this in fucking 2019 when I first went to Finland. She said, you know, I just think that they told you you had sickle cell, that you really don't have it, that they told you that to, to limit you. And I said, well, according to the lab, um, the lab documentation I have, they've noted sickle cell morphology in my blood. So either the medical records are fucking fake and there's something else genetically that has gone on all these years that have caused me this horrible fucking pain. Or I really do have it, but it was a result of a genetic snafu and it wasn't passed down from my parents. But when she said that shit, and I remember that the other day and I thought twice about it, I said, you know what, my surrogate never seemed to she she claimed she would suffer sometimes i'm like yeah you know people with the trait can get pain sometimes and sometimes i get these pains in my legs i think she was fucking lying i think she was lying to keep up the facade that of her being my real mother none of her children have sickle cell trait none of them do so then that means you don't have the fucking trait that means biologically speaking you cannot possibly be my mother If we're talking about sickle cell being passed down through birth, you know what I'm saying? Which is the only way a person can get it. Other than a person can get it if their genes are modified. If there is genetic engineering done on a person, you can edit their genes and give them a genetic chronic illness that they wouldn't otherwise have. That's where I'm leaning. I'm leaning more towards genetic engineering done on me from the time I was in the womb on, you know, to, you know, I think it was done on me in the womb y'all y'all might be like how the fuck let me tell you something me and kenyatta were talking because we believe and I, i'm not going to go too deep into that because that's her personal private information she also was experimented on in the same way she just didn't end up with a genetic chronic illness like me but me and her were talking and she was saying that it was done, It and I, I had figured this out already, but she was like, yeah, it was done in utero, but she also experienced something too. And she, we were talking about how she knew people in the military who, there were some of them, like she knew one lady who was in the military who was having all kind of promiscuous sex and was fertile the lady was able to have children didn't have no you know no infertility issues the lady was always having sex unprotected and yet she was taking these so-called vitamins that the military gave her and yet she never got pregnant there was another man that kenyatta knew who was in the military that was a skinny guy in high school and all of a sudden he started taking the the, the, the military gave him these so-called vitamins they called them vitamins gave him some motherfucking vitamins and that nigga beefed up like goddamn Dwayne the Rock Johnson off of these vitamins and people start asking him like dude what are you doing you you bodybuilding now you working out now he was like nah I'm just taking these vitamins the military gave me I mean but he was enlisted so the VA gave him that the military gave it that but he bulked up and became super strong off of those so-called vitamins <laughs> 
So I don't know the source of this so-called genetic experiment that I believe was done on me, but I do have a lot of fucking evidence that, and, and, and I'm going to say this, I don't intend on having no communication with that surrogate at all. And the reason why is because she could have killed me and she threatened to kill me a couple of times. So for you people who know her locally, you need to understand what kind of abusive person she was to me during my life. Y'all don't have no fucking idea to some of the things she did and said. You have no fucking idea. That is a mentally ill person. Even if she were my blood mother, why the fuck did you treat your daughter like that? Your daughter that came out of your loins. Why did you treat your daughter like that? You got some explaining to do. You sit up in fucking Bethesda Church of God, acting like you holier than now, going to the altar calls and shit, sitting up in Sunday school, but you's a goddamn devil, bitch. And let me tell y'all something. The other day when I put that message out saying, the man I need, my, my nigga, <laughs> my nigga, and my Denzel from training day voice, you need to explain to me what the fuck y'all did to me. Not only just, with the genetic engineering but how am i so so much older but i'm younger looking you know like i don't number one i don't gain no fucking weight i stay right at 120 to 130 pounds standard no matter what i eat the most i'm gonna gain is five to ten pounds that's not just my genes okay that's also got to do with my spiritual archetype but i also will say this when i put that message up the other day where I said I found out I'm a super soldier. That very night, y'all, where I put at the end of that message, there was a pendulum reading. Where I asked on camera whether the surrogate is my real mother and they said no. That very fucking night, that surrogate came in my dreams, intruded my dreams, along with her youngest daughter. And in my dreams, she was looking down her nose at me with in disgust saying, she's not my daughter. She's not my daughter. And she was saying it in front of her youngest daughter, who is her blood daughter, the child of my stepfather. Because that youngest daughter recently emailed me. And that surrogate heard my message or either the daughter went and told her. So that night they both was in my dreams. Let me tell you motherfucker something. I have been given permission to curse both of you. I suggest you stop. Now you the youngest, actually the most high didn't tell me to curse you, but he did tell me to get your energy up out of my field. So I'm going to do what I need to do on that. Because let me tell you, out of all the years you've been born, walking this planet in this life, since you came in here in 1993, you have never been in one of my dreams. I have never, ever, 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 ever had a dream of you, young lady. But that night, when it, when that pendulum showed that that surrogate, your mama is not my mama, she was in my dream saying, she's not my daughter. And she was saying it to you. And both of you were looking down, down your noses at me like I was a piece of fucking trash. Like I was a steaming pile of garbage. Now I have been given permission to curse her. To bind her. Because I told her before, if she didn't leave me alone, I was going to lock her up. Kenyatta told her, Kenyatta already spoke to her on Astro. And she showed up. Kenyatta didn't lie about that shit. Let me tell you, I already said that Kenyatta had spoke to that surrogate, your mama, on Astro. And the proof that she spoke to her. Kenyatta ain't never met your mama before. Kenyatta has never seen your mama in real life before and lived damn near 900 miles away from her, but she described your mama to a fucking T and how she acts. Even the way she holds her hands and she's so defensive and, and hides shit. A stonewall demeanor, but yet want to be up in everybody else's fucking business. I told her weeks ago, Kenyatta told her, you need to leave Brie alone. 
your mama said okay but yet last the other night she was in my dreams and it disturbed my spirit your mama had dreams of me over the years that i would be famous and wealthy your mama had dreams of me over the years that not only would i be famous and wealthy i would have a husband also who's famous and wealthy in his own right your mama had dreams of me of my potential your mama did things to hinder my life your mama is a fucking malignant narcissist i told you that years ago let me add this let me add insult to injury your mama also probably needs to be diagnosed with munchausen's by proxy because she was doing black magic to make me sick over the years so that she could get attention and look like a fucking hero yeah you know my daughter's sick mm -hmm, you know she's one of those yeah she's one or she's one of those yeah you know because i do so much for her and she's so ungrateful had the whole family and anybody that would listen thinking that oh anytime i wanted to be of my own mind and do something that i wanted to do anytime i listened respectfully but yet still made my own choice about things even as an adult it was called you're ungrateful you're disrespectful anytime i defended myself against lies and projected anger that was thrown onto me for things that were not my fault it ain't my fault my daddy didn't want your black ass bitch your black ball-headed ass it ain't my fault my daddy didn't want you you tried to force him to marry you and you tried to force his mama, my grandmother, to make him marry you. And when that didn't work, then you started doing black magic. I know you did it because I found out you used to play in black magic and Ouija boards and shit when you was younger. Also, I had a dream. I had a dream. Several years ago, matter of fact, actually, let me roll it on back, roll it on bike. I had a dream back in early 2020 that your mama, the surrogate of mine, was dressed in all black, sitting in a circle with other women in all black, and they were all fucking witches. And she kept trying to get me to drink and eat something in the dream, and I refused it. I would not eat it, and I would not drink it. And she just kept staring at me, waiting patiently. And then she started to get a little aggravated, like, why won't she eat and drink this? I've already reported this publicly. Those that heard it remember me saying that she tried to get me to eat and drink something. And that she was sitting around with some fucking witches dressed in all black. Your mama used to be a part of a witch coven. She ain't a part of one right now, or no more. But she used to be a part of a witch coven. That's why I saw her like that. Because she was younger in that dream. I have prophetic dreams. I've always had them. And when I see people a certain way in a dream, I know to trust it. I know to fucking trust it. So, I've advised her to leave me alone. Kenyatta told her that she needs to leave me alone. It's gloves off now. I already told you she's next. She's going to be the one out of her siblings to die next. And Oh, yeah, I know you didn't know this, former sis. I know you didn't know this, but that auntie that just died, that was Lula's daughter by another man. That was not Alder's baby. That's why her name was different than everybody else's. Alder had a baby out of wedlock, and so did Lula. Now, I'm not disrespecting the deceased, but those are Dolores' parents. They're not my grandparents. But I am telling you the truth. I bet you didn't know that. Dolores lied, right? Because, see, I had asked Dolores a couple years ago why her brother that died in New Jersey of the colon cancer, why he had a different last name than everybody else. And she said, well, I don't know. I don't know. She's a liar. That's the kind of stuff she does. I asked her why Lutricia had a different last name. She said, I don't know. I think she got married. You think you don't know your oldest sister, whether she got married or not? You think? And I said, no, I said, that don't really, that don't really make sense because her daughter, Quanda, uh, Quanda last name is Ford. And Lutricia last name was Swafford. Swafford and Ford are not the same last name. So no, if she got married, 
Her name was Swafford in her fucking yearbook. I seen the yearbooks. Her name was never Lutricia Bellamy. Her name was Swafford in her high school yearbook. I saw it years ago. I'm not dumb. I know when motherfuckers is lying to me. So Lutricia is Lula's daughter from another relationship. It was not Elder's child. And Allard Overby passed on years ago. He was Allard's son by another child, by another uh, woman. Okay, they both had children outside of their marriage or before their marriage. Okay, all right. The only ones that are Allard and Lula's children together are the surrogate, her brother in California, and the, her sister in New York. That's it. The other two are outside children. That's why they were always distant. All right, that's why they look different. Lutricia is shaped different than everybody else, or was, excuse me. I'm not going to say rest in peace because I don't mean it. So I'm not going to say it because she didn't treat me good. She was an asshole to me. Okay. So I'm not going to say rest in peace. Good riddance. All right. No disrespect to her daughter, but I'm going to just say it. Fuck it. It's time for these secrets to come out. Cause see, had I had the most high not made sure that I came in contact with Kenyatta, I would never have found out. It's potentially, it is, it is highly likely that i would have never fucking found out that the surrogate is not my mother i would have had to continue to endure gaslighting and abuse why you ain't call your mama well you know you got family here too no i don't now i'm not being ugly because y'all know that meaning y'all that you know uh knew or know me and them know that I always did for the family. But I kept my distance after a certain amount of time because of the surrogate. And she would get in her moods and take her anger out on me. So she had a problem with her husband uh, or just whatever, bad day. Sometimes she would call and leave a nasty voicemail on my phone. That's why I changed my number several times over the years. That's why I kept my distance. She, she was then starting to um, engage in narcissistic abuse on my children. From the time they were little, preschool age, I noticed it. Narcissistic abuse. I was not going to let her break my children the way she tried to break me. She always called me rebellious. You goddamn right, because I'm not going to let anybody treat me like a dog. I will, be, I will be like the devil himself to anybody that attempts that with me. So if you want to call it rebellious or hard-headed or ungrateful, fuck you, you can go to hell and I'll meet you there. Period. I'm not going to let you break my children. I'm not going to let you break people I care about. Okay? I've been through the fire with these motherfuckers. Now, I'm not going to go back over, oh, I'm grateful they did this. I'm Fuck that. I already said my thank yous. They know that. I'm not going to let nobody hold no shit over my head. Because the fact of the matter is the motherfuckers took a lot from me. Understand that she was doing black magic to make me sick. To block my children's lives. To steal my money and other valuable things from my destiny. Now, can't nobody take things really, but I'm just saying, doing things to block me, doing things to hinder me, lying, breaking up relationships, breaking up my marriage, breaking up engagements. This was her at work. Her. So you wonder why my children's fathers don't have nothing to do with them? It's because they saw for themselves. I didn't bad mouth her or nobody else in the family to my children's fathers, but I did tell them the truth. I did tell them, you know, she can be very controlling and is. I did tell them, don't let her try to control your relationship and try to make you bring the children around her because she's not mentally in a good place to have children around her like that. Hell, she ain't in a good place mentally to have no fucking body around her. That's why the Most High made her go to a fucking mental hospital a couple years ago. The most I sat her ass down because she's arrogant. And so she spends her days and nights or days mostly sleeping, eating, and sitting watching TBN. 
and she thought she was gonna break my life up into pieces and laugh and, and talk shit about me behind my back to her other children who I used to think are my siblings. They're not. There's no blood relation there. Now, I don't know what will happen in the future as far as my communication with them or whatever, but I'm going to tell you one thing for sure. I will never speak to that surrogate, ever. Don't ever ask me to. Don't ever try to push me up to do it. Because, see, what's going to happen is if any of you who know me try to push me up to speak to her and I'm not feeling it or the most I told me not to do that, I'm going to cut you off. Because that's called trying to send somebody into the fucking lion's den. And I'm going to tell you, the last time things got real heated, I couldn't end up killing her. Dead ass. The last time we called ourselves sitting down and things were heated because she was mad at me was years ago. But I'm just going to say, I couldn't end up killing her that day. I could have been serving a fucking life sentence right now. Because she's aggressive and she like to put her hands on people. Now, I believe that some of the drugs that her doctors or psychiatrists have her own have toned that aggression down, like I said before. But I'm not taking my chances. I'm not going to let nobody take my life. I will take yours first and I'll serve my time and I'll get out. That's just it. You're not going to take my life. You're not going to take my children's life. You're not going to wound me mortally. I'm going to take your life if you attempt it. And she has attempted it before in several ways. She's made verbal threats. She's thrown a heavy lead vase, uh, excuse me, glass at my lead crystal glass. One of them beer mugs. The motherfuckers are heavy. They're three or four pounds. She threw one of those at the back of my fucking head. And it just swooshed right past my fucking ear. The most I made sure that shit didn't hit me. But can you imagine what would have happened had it hit the back of my head? Who knows if I would be living right now? That's the kind of shit she did. All right. After I had just gotten out of the hospital at that, you throwing a vase, you throwing a glass at somebody at the back of their fucking head because you're getting angry. And I just got out of the hospital after being in the hospital for three weeks and I'm weak. So no, don't any of you on this fucking planet ever try to make me have a relationship with that surrogate. Them days are done. I have tried for uh i haven't spoken to her since the end of 2019 i had i tried for 35 36 years okay to have a positive relationship with her and it didn't work you will not get me to try or waste any more fucking time on that i don't want no relationship with her and i don't want no relationship with none of her fucking flying monkeys and her relatives that believe her over me you want to believe her you believe her but you stay the fuck away from me don't contact me don't come with your hand out when I'm rich, bitch. Don't come looking for nothing. Because you won't get it. Not even my ex-husband, who's white, tried to make me have a relationship with her that I didn't want to have. So the rest of you motherfuckers need to stay in your lane, too. Because I know how people are. When they hear that somebody has been that much of a saboteur in a person's life, they'll try to fuck you over by making you go back to that. It's like trying to make somebody go back to a toxic relationship or go back and be a hostage of a fucking terrorist. I'm not doing it. I don't give a damn if I don't have any friends. I will not do it. It's not right. That's not what the Most High told me to do. The Most High told me don't have no contact with him. And that's what I'm going to do until it changes or unless it changes. So I don't know who all out there is listening. I don't know what family member might listen or whatever on either side. Well, I only got one side or, or even if there might be relatives of my passed on biological mother listening. I don't know. I ain't lied about nothing. And I dare that bitch, if she ever want to challenge me in court, the surrogate, take a DNA test and we'll find out if you really my mother. Y'all can hold you, y'all niggers can hold your fucking secrets as long as you want to hold them. But that science ain't going to lie. So you can try to cover up where I came from. You can try to cover up who my mother was or, 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 or who's who or what. You can lie. You can try to pivot. You can try to keep these secrets. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to fucking burn for all you have done. For all the lies that you helped perpetrate. I'm almost 40 fucking years old. 
so they say but i'm really much older than that there's no way i should just be finding out there's no fucking reason other than the divine reason that i should just be finding out that that abuser was not my mother and i was made to respect her which i don't mind being respectful but i'm just saying i was forced to do things and obey things that were wrong on the premise of i'm your mama fuck you bitch if you ever try me if you ever find me try to come up rolling up on me i promise you i fucking promise you on everything i love that'll be the end of you that'll be the end of you i don't want no contact with you and i might be living in the same city as y'all right now right now i'm not demonizing her husband i have a, i have a problem with how he allowed her to get away with things but he knows that i'm not her daughter all of y'all know all y'all knew except me i'm glad i'm not her daughter because i never looked up to her like that I always chose other female figures as my role models. I'm glad I'm not her daughter, but I will say this. I may be living in the same city now. Fortunately, I ain't run into none of y'all. And I pray I already asked the most high my guys to make sure I don't. But I'm going to say this. I ain't always going to be living here. There's going to come a time when I'm going to be far away. Okay potentially if that's what the most high's will is but i already feel it because the risk is not gonna be there for these motherfuckers to be riding by my house and all of that shit it's not i got a toxic karmic ex twin flame that lives here too the risk is not gonna be there for these people to be running into me in the grocery store asking me why i don't speak to that fucking abuser i'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna answer that shit again so listen now and listen clearly I've already told you why I don't speak to her. Don't ask me again. None of you. None of you. I don't give a fuck. You see me at a gas station, at, the guy, at, a, at wherever. Don't ask me why I don't talk to them. Because I'm telling you right now. And you got hundreds of videos you can go listen to. Including the last 20 or 30 that I've done. About why I don't want no contact. Don't try to press me about it. Now I know there were some that didn't know. Well now you fucking know if you're listening. And you'll find out. If it's meant for you to find out. Everything coming full circle about why nothing was ever done for me. Nobody helped me go through college. Nobody ever helped me. Like when I did go to my first college, when, not, when I got accepted to my first college, Coastal Carolina in Myrtle Beach, I understand now why she didn't want me to live in her mother's house because I thought that was my grandmother. And I'm like, well, why can't I live in granny's house instead of having to pay $700 or, you know, do work study and get all these loans to have $700 apartment? A student apartment when I can't afford that and or why can't I just live at granny's house and we fix it up or whatever and I keep up the utilities because y'all aren't helping me with any college costs anyway neither did my father so why couldn't I live at granny's house I understand now why because I'm not granny's granddaughter I don't have no blood relation to them it's no wonder they wouldn't want me to have no house and no land from their family i don't belong to that family it's no wonder that when there's land in the family she wasn't considering giving none of me giving none of it to me it's no wonder that jewels and other things being passed down the state things it's no wonder that none of that shit got given to me because i don't belong to them but that's okay it's good that i don't belong but i'm gonna tell you what all of that shit that was withheld and taken i'm getting it back what peanut shells y'all family might have had sit back and watch what i get blessed with in comparison